Hello, Capsulers, and welcome. This is Who is a Fish with Talking in Stations, and today we're going to be welcoming some special guests, Caleb and Timé, who are some industry experts, and we're going to be discussing the economy of Eve Echoes. So welcome, guys. How are we doing today? We're doing fine. Excellent. Uh, can you guys introduce yourselves for those who may not know you? Caleb, why don't you start? Well, I'm Caleb Aranya. I'm uh, quite an, an old Eve online veteran. Uh, and I mainly do uh, market stuff and industry, and then I do a lot of uh, Eve media. Hello, Capsulers, and welcome. This is who is a And I'm Tima. I'm in Royal gonna... Elite playing in Eve Echoes today. Um, I'm also an old school Eve bitter vet, um, although I never really did an industry in Eve Online. I, I now lead the industrial section of the Royal Elite Corporation here in Echoes. So, what's your background in economics, Tima? How What makes you an industry expert? Uh, well, these days I, I have a MBA and I work in corporate strategy, specifically in mergers and acquisitions. And so I spend a lot of a lot of time crunching numbers and trying to determine the value of things. That's awesome. Oh. So that sounds like you kind of dive more into the business side. Um, and would you say that there really is real life application to the economics in Eve compared to real life? Oh, without a doubt. Um, even I think p people started realizing this even as early as like 2003, 2004, and, and Eve Online that you know this thing really does behave like a real world economy. All the sorts of forces that you would expect to see in terms of supply shocks and demand side effects, all of that is present within the Eve Online economy. And a big part of that is realizing that unlike many other game economies, Eve is Eve has this creative destruction effect where you're constantly blowing up ships, and that's taking assets out of the game. That's taking essentially essentially labor hours out of the game. And that this creates this kind of virtuous cycle of needing to constantly be mining and producing ships and replacing assets because they're always getting destroyed, unlike in places like WoW, where there isn't really the only dynamic is you have some uh, losses in like equipment durability and things that sink a little bit of money out of the game, but there's just constantly more and more drops being added. Whereas here we have this attrition. I, th I thought you were going to give the props for uh, e EVE Online being the only game still that has a proper brokerage exchange system because <laughs> all the other games do not have anything remotely like that and it's so important if you want an economy where the market actually works for you the circle of life of course is is, is a major part of why it works because that's the whole sinks and faucet uh, balance right but without i think without the exchange system it would have been a completely different game well when we talk about the exchange system do you mean the player driven market or do you mean like the plex market no, I mean the actual uh, SEC market, the way that that market works with uh, actual uh, buy orders and sell orders and, <clears throat> and a proper price finding uh, mechanism. It, it gives you something that has to be in all the other games out there, right? Because they're mostly uh, auction house based and similar things. You have to have the players actually create these uh, graphic representations of what it would be like if it was an actual market, but it's really not. So you can't see things like like uh, market depth. You can't see how much is actually being traded uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in a way that can be trusted. You have to kind of estimate that uh, either by doing weird things like scraping or in, in kind of like what we have to do with echoes right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and and this is this is where even at launch, you, you did have a proper market. Of course, you didn't have all the API stuff, so we had to scrape it, um, and we pretty much did that since. I think it was actually year one that we uh, got the first uh, scraping service. Uh, and I've noticed recently that uh, we do have a scraping service in Eve Echoes as well. Um, and I've been looking at it a little bit. It's still very rough and hasn't really um, gotten to a point where it's really useful. Um, but yeah, their the, 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 the volume estimation approaches has some challenges right now. But like, it's, it's one of these observation problems. Like, and, until NetEase kind of opens up the kimono and lets us really see all the transactions going through this, the market, we're never going to get that level of granularity. We always kind of have to jury rig it and, and make estimations on just what is the volume of tritanium on any, any given day in Eve Echoes. Now, Caleb. That's also exciting, right? It's, it's exciting that it's, it's, it's so, you, you've got this obfuscation, this, this fog of war thing that even if we just start scraping and, and doing estimates and, but if the tools get good enough, that is the first step towards having uh, a, pro a proper player driven economy. Mm -hmm. Definitely could use some more tools when it comes to the industry side of things because it's a lot of manual work, it's a lot of effort, to very, it can be very challenging. Um, but for anyone who's not necessarily as heavily involved in industry, Timmy, can you explain 
um, to us what an ink, ISC sink and faucet is and then explain why it's significant. Certainly. So we saw in really the first graph that NetEase released in this batch of what we call the first MER in scare quotes. Um, I think <laughs> before the show, Caleb and I were really ha having a hoot about just how much of a mess this, uh, this document is. But their first document really all talks about principally um, what is generating ISK into the in-game economy. And this is, for many people, that is their source of income in the game. It's are they killing rats? Are they running missions? And from a macroeconomic perspective, on the other hand, it's a little different because it's, we look at, like Caleb and I, how we think about it. We only look at the two pieces that matter to us is how much ISK is getting generated by bounties and how much ISK is generated by those mission rewards. And that dwarfs all other sources of real of kind of real isk injection in the game and it sets up this this macroeconomic dynamic that we were talking about this virtual cycle of destruction and creation um and that is from a macro perspective what we describe as an ink faucet now oh go ahead it's, it's really about it's, it's really about how how things get into the game and how it gets out of the game um and and of course this is what creates a circle of life and this is one of the the points where I have a little bit of an issue with uh, Eve Echoes because I don't think that they have properly figured out how to control this, and I think some of the aspects that they have copied pretty fairly and and well from Eve Online are not necessarily the right ones. They they're still missing out on on a few things like and and of course uh, when we saw this um, what you would call an attempt of an MER. Um, one of the things is that uh, on the graph that shows something like uh, the ISK faucets, some of them are actually not real faucets. <laughs> they're, they're, they're more like uh, the flip side of uh, an actual sink. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so it's like, okay, uh, do you actually know which data points to, to select for making these graphs? And no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what happened, Caleb, is that they gave this task to the intern, and the intern yeah. just did a query of all the green numbers in everyone's wallet, and that's how they built this graph. Yeah. This is valid. Okay, if if this was an intern that that um, is, is is starting out in 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 data science analysis, I'd I'd give them a B, right? But but it's definitely something that uh, needs some work. Because, yeah, okay. <laughs> my my girlfriend and I uh, are very much into the whole market stuff, and and especially uh, in the upper echelons of analysis of uh, Eve Online. And uh, our comment was, "This is a joke. This is completely useless. It's not saying anything." It's not saying anything meaningful. Uh, if it says anything, it says something about uh, current player agency. What is possible? How are players choosing to do specific things? And as I think I said to you, Fish, uh, the only thing I really got from this was Kaldari Master Race. <laughs> it's Min Matar all the way. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but that's just not what the graph is saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you're also saying we can't trust the graph just because of the graph's style. So, you know, data is only as good as the person who's uh, figuring out how to use it properly, right? Yeah, clearly, half, half the data is the presentation, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. But um, you, you touched on a point that I wanted to highlight in terms of what are the what are the activities that are introducing ISK? And it sounds like ratting, uh, where you get bounties and mission rewards, are the two main activities producing and yielding ISK. What are your thoughts on that? Because there is, EVE is supposed to be a sandbox, and there's supposed to be other ways that you can make ISK. Is this really the best way for players to make the most ISK? Well, I'm pretty sure that they're, they're pretty much the same as in EVE Online. There, there's, there's no difference really on that side. Uh, I don't know how it actually uh, translate directly into the individual small uh, activities but mission rewards and bounties are pretty much the faucets of isk in eve online as well um there is of course the conversion aspects where you have things like insurance in eve which okay then we're going to get down that rabbit hole i don't really want to go there anyways um when when a player has spent a lot of time actually uh creating a ship and they then insure it, and then they get the insurance payout. That's also an actual ISK faucet in EVE Online. But everything else is just getting that ISK to, to circle around, which is really what creates the economy. This is why we uh, have things like uh, calculations of velocity of ISK and, and all that stuff, because what we're interested in is to see how it then moves around and gets added to value. And still, I'd say 90% of the player base still don't understand that mining is actually not an ISK faucet. <laughs> 
because they still think that because they get the ore and then sell it then magically money appears okay granted way back in the early days in like the first year of eve online minerals was potentially an isk faucet because you could sell it directly to ccp but that went away fairly quickly so there is really only those basic isk faucets and then it's really about in my opinion the ideal goal is to reduce the uh, the faucets and the sinks so it becomes a pvp centric game and the money just changes exchanges hands between the players that's yeah. the best connect scenario for me yeah i would describe that as a, a fully circular economy or a, a fully recycled economy um what kind of diving into a little bit deeper into your question uh, fish so in, in terms of player activities and things that they can do to generate wealth for an individual player obviously as as caleb mentioned killing npc npc pirates get those bounties completing missions to get some of those really big mission rewards and we've seen the obviously even in the data that was presented to us by netties like that piece of the pie is enormous right now it's it's generating the lion's share of all of the isk in the in the that's floating around in the economy and then obviously Killing those pirates also generates some loot drops, module drops that are at least in Eve Echoes, which is very different from Eve Online. You know, that's the only way we get modules and Echoes, and so we have to have this constant killing of NPCs and ratting in order to be injecting modules that we can then fit in our ships and then go pew pew and blow each other up. Um, and then the relative amount of additional wealth generated by mining and planetary interaction, planetary production is actually pretty small. And if you want to bring up that that graph that I showed you um, or sent you earlier. Fish, I can I can talk through it a little bit more. Yeah, let me bring up this graph. There we go. It's up. Okay, and on on relative, you can see in, in relative sizes of where the where the money is getting generated, and we see almost sixty two percent of all the wealth that's generated is coming directly from NPC pirate bounties and encounter rewards. Another chunk of it is also getting generated by or getting brought in to the economy through those NPC module drops that I mentioned and only only about 10 trillion of the 64 trillion isk that's been generated since the launch of the game has actually been created through uh, mining and only 4 trillion of it has been created through planetary interaction and now that, that's based on I had to make some estimations and and assumptions based on the data that, that it was presented but I think from my vantage point as kind of a macroeconomics guy, like that to me seems like a pretty unhealthy ratio, particularly if you look at how much ISK gets sunk into manufacturing in any given ship. The proportion of ISK to any given manufacturing job is very small relative to the proportion of minerals and ore that needs to be mined in order to produce that ship. Um, I think NetEase has getting ready to make that change with planetary production in NullSec. I think that's probably even just at a high level looking at the statistic, that seems about right, because you have almost almost half as much wealth effectively being created through PI that really has nowhere to go right now, because the ratio of minerals to PI is about 10 to 1, um, if you look at any, any of those big manufacturing build jobs. So right now, there's just way too much planetary production flooding into the economy. And that's probably hurting all, all the typical players that aren't botting with hundreds and hundreds of these bot farms that we're seeing producing planetary interaction in NELSEC. Now, that kind of brings just, up... Just, can, can I just... Uh, uh, there's just one thing I would like to ask Timo about, because I don't know how he feels about this, and I think it's very important in relation to what you just uh, explained. The fact that there's these extremely high... Uh, isk sinks um, taxation wise on the market which didn't really exist in EVE Online in the early days it was almost massively more liberal back then I think this actually hurts the game uh, I, I'm a fan of, of isk uh, sinks of course I just think they put them in the worst place possible because you do not want to uh, hurt the market and industry side of the game's ecosystem and I do think that these massive uh, taxations actually do that because they, they force these prices to land in a place where it's actually not benefiting. Yeah, the, I actually have an even more pessimistic view of it than that, Caleb, because what, what we found and that I think at this point most of the large alliances have figured out is that you can avoid the vast majority of the taxes. So really what's happening is not only do we have, have these enormous tax burdens that are slowing down the velocity of ISK and the velocity of assets in the economy, but on top of that, the big null blocks, the big alliances 
can avoid like 90 95 percent of those fees as well and as a result we're just it, it's we're having this really we're setting up for a situation much like we have in eve online where it's like the haves and the have nots and then all psych alliances and the well organized blocks are just light years ahead of anybody else because we can avoid some of these fees we can avoid the majority of these taxes and these isk sinks and be very efficient with our capital assets and our cap and our labor to, to, to a degree and as a result like we're just going light years ahead of everyone else yeah and you're forcing in, uh, internalized markets right pretty much like contracts in in eve online so mm -hmm. it never it never hits the 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 actual sec market uh, and that means that the whole mechanism of competition that was supposed to be the sec is not the sec at all it doesn't it doesn't do the work that it's supposed to and this is very similar in eve echoes and it's actually something that has been a problem in eve online for at least the past five years and i've been ranting about that quite a while uh, so if anyone has an interest in, in, in such mechanics and how you have these two sides of, uh, of economies, uh, you can go and watch some earlier TIS shows. There's actually a good one where I discuss this with my almost polar opposite, which is uh, Dunk Dinkle. And, and we kind of argue what was the problem in the past with the protectionism and what is the, the problem now with this abundance. There's good sides to both when it comes to game mechanics, but they, they end up being stale, right? One is where nothing matters and the other is where everything is ruled by a very small elite yeah and it, it's, it's almost become like a failed state or the economy of a failed state is you have all these like black market transactions being being executed and if i were to wager the majority of transactions are now essentially happening off market or happening in these private contracts or direct like asset exchanges through corporate hangers and things like that um and as a result like that can't be healthy for the game like it, it's just going to create further problems for everybody in the whole ecosystem down the line. Well, and just even touching on that, to me, you mentioned how with planetary interaction, there's probably a, an, a, an abundance of, of planetary interaction. And the devs did make this change where um, now only text level seven pilots will be able to do that. Do you think that is going to help the economy, hurt the economy? What is your what is your take on that? So in Eve Echoes, planetary action actually serves as an a potentially an interesting function. Um, it's almost like putting the being able to put the brakes onto any production, and as a result, right now the brakes are totally off because there's just way too much planetary planetary action materials coming into the market, coming into the ecosystem. Overall, in terms of like how it would, would affect any given player, it doesn't matter. Right now, like the mechanic as as it could be used isn't really leveraged. Now. If depending on how they implement sovereignty, and this is something that you and I talked about last night when we were in kind of the pre-show prep, that like if if as part of the sovereignty system, NetEase locked moon or planetary production to a single corp that owns the sovereignty of that system, that could really introduce some interesting scarcity dynamics. Because then you are going to have to fight for those really high value. Because even like in, the, in our home region in Declan, there's like five or six systems that are like ultra high value systems for planetary action. And if if now we have these nice little trophies that the null blocks have to fight over because they generate, they're so critical to the supply chain of ships and war material, that could be a very interesting dynamic. Now, obviously, you can go to high sec and still interact with the market that way, and that's that's cool. But as many of the null sec blocks go, and they want to always kind of be self sufficient and be able to provide for their own, um, I think that kind of a dynamic in the future could be really beneficial to the whole ecosystem. I just like to add that. Personally, I think uh, NetEase could take advantage of trying to implement the insurance system in a way that's actually better than EVE Online. Because fundamentally, if the pricing is correct on insurance, right, that would actually be a massively scalable ISK sync, right? Uh, one of the things that most people don't realize is that because mortality rate in EVE Online, so destruction numbers, is so low, right, compared to production, when you then incentivized by actually adding insurance because people want to be able to replace their ship. They will still be flying around in it for so long and there's so few of them dying that it will be a massive net isk, uh, sink. This is much better than trying to put it on traders or even on industrialists because this is where you want the competition to happen, right? And, and this is where you get the benefits of price finding and where the ecosystem finds its own balance. If you're nerfing that, you're basically strangling the baby before it's even born yeah i agree caleb i think that that's a really that's a really good way to think about it and i, I share many of your same concerns i think right now the brutality of loss in 
Eve Echoes is a little too extreme because you don't you can't replace anything above tier three you can't replace anything that's not a tr trainer and instead now people are just abusing the uh <laughs> the support ticket system to get their stuff restored and like that that's not a healthy way to encourage the game because then well nobody's building those replacement chips so you should instead have some kind of mechanism that incentivizes people to when they lose a ship to go back out of the market and buy a ship and i'm not talking about this purely from the um self-centered perspective of i build a lot of ships so that would be really great for me but like this helps the entire economy it helps the entire e the loss of a ship not be as brutal as it is today because when you look at like a battle cruiser loss of like 350 300 350 million isk like that's huge and like comparative to like the level of effort that it would take you to get that kind of isk even at eve, on eve online like that's that's even more brutal. Like the difference in loss there between you online is just huge. And then and then personally, I think that NetEase could also uh, benefit from uh, getting ahead of uh, Eve Online by making sure that they fix their NPC prices of services or things like blueprints or whatever. All these items need to follow inflation, right? <laughs> if if the influx of ISK in the game increases to double, you have to double those prices as well. You you cannot leave them flat, right? Because when the availability of money in a system r rises, especially, of course, you have to divide it out by how much can you make per labor hour. And of course, you have to uh, divide all the available ISK in the game with all the active players in the game. Of course, you need to do the proper metrics, but then you need to scale these prices because otherwise you have these problems like you do in EVE Online where all the numerical uh, values of things like in uh, things like the uh, loyalty point shop and all those things are fundamentally meaningless all of them are outdated except for the things that got added later so so the pricings are all off on the majority of items in eve online they need to make sure that in netties they don't make the same mistake yeah and in many ways we've kind of avoided most of those problems because so few things are seated in the market we don't have bpos like we do in or we had in EVE Online. So all all the blueprint copies are created and crafted by players. Well, really, everything above like tier three is crafted by players. And all those are then generated from drops that are data cores in PVE sites. So we don't quite have that problem. And we don't have these like secondary and tertiary currencies like loyalty points and, and other like kind of loyalty rewards and things that you get from mission running and things in, in EVE Online. But Fundamentally, your point is, is spot on, Caleb, in that you know, if we don't have some kind of dynamic inflation control mechanism, we are going to run, we're going to hit a runaway inflation period. And it's already, the data is already there that with, if you look at the amount of ISK sinks that they have in, in the second exhibit that they, they presented to us in, in the first economic report versus the ISK faucets, we're way out of balance. Like, and if and this is just going to accelerate and get worse um, because if you look at what's generating the most wealth, it's missions and ratting. And those things are getting more productive, more efficient every single day. Every single person that hits tech six, every single person that hits tech seven is going to get exponentially more efficient in generating ISK through those activities. And that's just going to create this runaway inflationary event. So in, so, can you kind of highlight, I guess, one of the main dangers you foresee with this happening? What, what, is that, what does that mean for the economy in terms of the main danger with inflation for someone who might not fully understand what that is? Well, it, it, will, be, it, it will create this divide and, and the problems with catch-up mechanics and the richer getting richer and the poor will be proportionally poorer all the time. And then when they get the feeling that they need to start nerfing some of the faucets, this is just going to be exacerbated because the people that already have their store wealth mm -hmm. is going to be ahead of the, everyone else. And this is where some of the some of the things that have been a problem in EVE Online should definitely be on the radar of, of NetEase. And, and it's really interesting because right now, EVE Online is s seriously trying to fix some of the problems. So, so all these discussions are being had. And, and one of the major ones, uh, of course, we just covered the things uh, and faucet stuff. But another one is the whole interdependency. The, the fact that, that if you make everything too much brute force in just one direction and N plus one with no dependency on anyone else. So this whole, if I mine it myself, it's free. And if me and my guys do everything internally, uh, it, uh, it, it's more efficient. And if we just brute force with more uh, multiple accounts or whatever, or add more players, we're gonna get ahead of the curve. If you design the game around this type of brute force mechanic, the ecosystem will die. It will literally die. Oh, 100%. Now, in terms of 
Um, one of the things you had mentioned for mission rewards, I think there was a, a great point that you, may, you had made offline to me, Tame, about them making low sec a little bit safer and what that can mean for these mission rewards. Because if the mission rewards get these large uh, bounties, like you can get like 200 mil um, from one bounty, and, or I guess a reward, now they have changed it so that at the gates, you, can't, you can really only attack like a, a character at the gate, but the gates have now been kind of made more safe. So it's inadvertently kind of increased the gap between these players. Now we're like what Caleb was saying, the rich are getting richer and the poor are going to have a continuously harder time catching up. Um, so it's almost like they've inadvertently created a wider gap rather than closing the gap. Um, oh, without, a, without a doubt. Um, and as I had mentioned, like even kind of our own internal observations of how, how our high sec and low sec mission runners are doing, like there's, there's a handful of missions, like Angel versus Devil and Bad Hair Day and Super Soft Drink and a couple of these like ultra high tier missions where you have to buy the skill chip or farm farms encounters to get the skill chip or to get the story chip to run the, the super mission. Um, you can generate north of 100 million isk an hour solo in a 2 billion isk cyclone doing those things. And it's an enormous amount of isk that's flooding into the market as a result of. Now, there is a little bit of friction there because you have to farm those like those underlying encounters and do enough of them. But if you have five or six accounts and you're just cycling through all your accounts, cycling through those story missions, it's really easy to do. It's this, this N plus one scaling problem that Caleb was just mentioning. Um, and you can get really efficient and really effective at farming those missions, even if you're not like you can buy them off the market and they're still extraordinarily profitable to buy off the market. But even if you we get to a point where that becomes less profitable, again, you still have these other mechanics of these, um, these laterally scaling N plus one mechanics where you can just have a couple more accounts, a couple more characters that you're cycling through these encounter missions on to farm up for those big win encounters. And that's going to continue to create a lot of problems for the economy as we go forward. And then on top of that, you slap in how they buffed, you know, 170 X times the gate gun damage is now basically made for, at least from my vantage point, low sec gate camping, a non issue. Like previously, that was really the only place that you could capture or capture and kill one of these two billion isk cyclones and take it off the market, wipe out those assets, you know, get on this virtual virtuous cycle of having to replace those assets and those modules and everything else. But now that there's almost zero risk, then okay, those assets aren't going away. So the only time you lose one of those two billion isk cyclones is when it gets blown up because of a disconnect or a bug or a glitch in the game and oh well we have this, this, this support mechanism where we just get it back for free fully returned no problem <laughs> yeah so it's definitely cre it's created a whole different set of problems and i know that they had the npcs now they've made them to switch targets faster but it seems like it's kind of already a moot point because like you said in a cyclone you can just face tank it solo you don't need to have this whole team in there uh, i know a lot of people were kind of previously cheesing these missions and you know you could just drop a, a crate and you know, warp to each crate and have one character hold aggro while the rest are just up close and the NPCs don't switch targets. So it just makes it extremely easy to kind of cheese your way through these missions, make a ton and a ton of isk. That's then not really, it's it's impossible to kind of capture these this kind of side. So it's there is definitely a few areas for improvement. I mean, what do you guys think in terms of the most immediate change that they could make to help improve the economy as it stands now? Make sure that you get the players the tools to actually be responsible for the sinking, right? Um, this is one of the things that's usually not necessarily discussed that much, but in EVE, the big conflict, even the me medium-sized conflict, that was existential risk, right? When you lost your shit back then, it was a lot, right? When, when, when you had massive fleet fights, the value that got destroyed from those were really meaningful to the economy. As, as I've joked uh, a, a few times, um, there was a, a discussion from the upper echelons of, uh, of EVE Online where uh, it was actually mentioned that war is not profitable and I almost uh, cracked myself uh, on that one because it is massively profitable when you're in industry and market stuff. Of course, if you're participating in a war, it's definitely not profitable. You're, you're, you're destroying so much value. Right? But that is the destruction that needs to get into EVE Echoes in a way where conflicts are of a scale where a lot of stuff gets sunk out. That is the only way to get the ecosystem to work. Yeah, absolutely. Like w without having healthy sinks of assets and, and not just ISK sinks, because like the, 
the devs right now seem hell bent and hell focused on putting in these huge isk sinks. But that's the isk sinks aren't the problem. It's I mean that they kind of are, but what creates a healthy Eve economy is an asset sink and the destruction of ships and modules and just getting that stuff out of inventories, out of hangars, just wiped off the board altogether. Let me get this straight. Are you guys are you guys saying okay. that war is the way to fix this problem? Because conflict, conflict and loss. Yeah, definitely. blood for the blood god. We are all because, for because, that. For the health of the economy, we're going to be warring everybody, guys. Thank you. But the the other thing is when 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 they've made these sinks right now, is sinks right? They're very binary. Where um, Tim had just mentioned the velocity of this, which is when money actually changes hands. This is this is where you need that number to go up. And then you do the, the the sinks in increments. You don't take out twenty percent on a transaction. You make sure that there's six, seven, eight, nine transactions of 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 that one isk. And then you take out a little bit on each step. That means that you will get the compounding interest up, and you are actually sinking out the same, if not more, by them exchanging hands instead. This is why you can actually shut off the the faucets if you just create this interdependency that I talked about. Yeah, that, that is that is the magic. That is the magic dynamic. Is and that, that that's the thing that I think Netties would benefit from. Honestly, hiring an economic consultant to explain to them the velocity of ISK and why having a twenty percent tax on every transaction is actually objectively worse for the economy than it is better, especially when you have these like roundabout ways where you just avoid the tax altogether. It's almost like we've the... found e players will always find the loopholes, aren't they? Kind of known for this, like yeah. yeah but, but but the point is that that markets it, just like in real life it needs to be seen as a utility right it's it's a service it is something that 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 makes life easier for everyone it shouldn't make your life easier to internalize your markets or if i mine it myself it's free it's like this whole way of thinking is is upside down the re reason we have markets is because it's more efficient this is this is economy 101 you do bananas i do oranges right this is the whole thing and then we exchange them and then there's uh, a piece of the pie goes to the guy that actually runs the market this is this is feudal markets 101 it's not really that complicated i'd be happy to help netties to actually uh, understand how it works because EVE Online hasn't really grown out of feudal uh, markets yet. Uh, it should, but that's a completely different story. But you want these transactions, you want the benefit of me being able to outsource part of my work because the bottlenecks uh, are annoying, the, uh, my, good, my, my guys are not skilled in that specific direction. This is why skill requirements, uh, even help blueprints, originals, I do I am a fan a little bit because it does have some benefit just to, to sync these things out. There's so many ways to do this that CCP has so much experience with. They did make some mistakes, but you can fix them. So just look at look at the board and actually read your economy books. It's not that difficult. <laughs> I love it. So that's pretty much one, one of the main things that you would be telling the devs over the economy right now would be to give more more tools to the players. Is that correct? And make yeah, sure and, that it's and, more and, of a player-driven economy. That's that's what makes yeah. it sandbox. It's almost like there's too much interference. An agency and differentiation, right? Speciality. You you you, you want these situations where Timmer uh, is now uh, into industry. You want to create these bottlenecks so he can't do everything. He needs to do some of uh, this stuff by outsourcing, right? Because otherwise he loses efficiency. This is the type of stuff that they need to put in there because if he can produce everything for every race, if he can uh, if it, effectively uh, just hammer those slots and add more and more alt accounts or dudes and become the only producer, you you can't catch up with something like that. Then there's nothing for new players. So it really limits like the entry, it, it actually limits the barrier to entry for all the new players who are coming in. So we've kind of got this head start. Now there's this massive gap. Now it's almost going to make it harder for us to integrate new players into the world. Yeah, particularly on the industrial side. I mean, I think we, we can you already see it with the effects of like production prices and market prices for ships and assets and echoes today. I mean, we, we were seeing even events earlier this week where now like Caldera Navy, uh, Caracal Navy issues are selling for below production costs already. So people people are now putting them up on market for less than the value of the minerals and the PI and the, main, the fixed manufacturing costs that it takes to to build one of these things, and they're on market for that, and that's 
again, we, we compare that to our internal build price, which is nearly perfect manufacturing, reprocessing, and like wealth generation efficiency. Like if we're already near perfect and people are already undercutting that, like we're already in this unhealthy inflationary, like overproduction, like lack of specialization type of environment. And if you compare that, say somebody who wants to do industry today, trying to get into that market, like that's it. Like <laughs> they're dead in the water unless they fully vertically integrate and mine their own ore, get their own PI, do their own manufacture because there's just no other way for them to even think about turning a profit. And then personally, I would really suggest that they consider something like recycling and refining actually have a time sink, right? And require slots. Um, the reason for this is because that's similar to what I talked about when I said that a good ISK sink would be when you force the players to actually store that ISK in something that's never going to actually be realized. Uh, it's similar when you're talking about industry uh, on the recycling and refining um, because then you can effectively say, okay, we don't take half when you recycle something. No, no, no. You can get 90% of it back, but it's got a time sink. That means that when it's in the recycle process, it's locked. That's actually raw materials that you've just taken out of the system. That is no longer available, right? So, so you have all these tools that you can use to limit. It's not a real faucet. It's more like you are depositing it and it's not going to be effectively available yet. So, so this is where I think things like repair, things like recycle, things like refine needs the time sink. And the time sink needs to be, again, back to the specialization. It should be skill based. It should be structure and location based. And that means that the players are forced to figure out how to specialize and optimize, right? And this also puts skin in the game if it's on player structures. Well, fr frankly, Caleb, I would I would push back on on that recommendation on a couple fronts. First, um, I, the the solution is just add more alts. If if I I mean I'm already running like five or six accounts, eighteen different characters to run to run my industrial empire. Like, if if I need to run like six more tunes and spit up six more processing all to do to do that, I can. And okay. if now it's one of these situations where, because I've got trillion, like billions and billions of ISK of working capital, I can sink a billion or two billion or three billion ISK into working capital to get an extra couple of percent margin and increase my my profitability on that front. If if that's going to improve my overall profitability, when yeah. again, so somebody else who who has a lot less assets and can't afford to you know tie up a third of their wealth True. in reprocessing timers can't you compete with me on that level. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You misunderstand. I believe that the slot limitation should be in space, not on your character sheet. Okay, yeah, th 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 that would be better. Th th that I agree. Th th that's a much better mechanic, because then not only do you have this limit this fixed limitation in space, but then you have something, you have a target that somebody can take out and shoot and exactly. advert, like strategically impact my my economy, my my industry, my game. And again, that now fuels this virtuous cycle of destruction and creation. It's just because I, I'm I'm opposed to this forced uh, thinking out of, of the recycle stuff because I honestly believe that if I recycle and I get 90% of my stuff back and I then make the flavor of the month, the thing that's currently volatility uh, actually increasing in value, so I want to produce that instead, then I, I, I retain volatility in the price finding system by keeping recycling the objects that are currently not valuable, right? So I'm taking a hit, I'm getting my minerals back, and then I'm starting a new production cycle. That means that I will put these things in, in, in the locked system instead. I don't like that they're forcing it to be sunk out the way that they you, do. You, you, like. you heard it here first, guys. Caleb wants to recycle all of your caracals. <laughs> send them send <laughs> into the fryer. <laughs> worthless, then I do, because then I want as much of that back as possible. And the more percentage I want, the longer the recycle uh, time should be, right? I, I need to dedicate more time, and it's 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 a slower and more expensive process to do recycling uh, than to actually produce from raw materials. So it would it, it would be a meaningful way of locking assets that uh, you want back instead of actually going out and mining it again. Hmm. Interesting. Now, I know we talked a lot about ratting and bounties and mission rewards being one of the main like ISP generators. But what about the issues that we were having with bots? Do we think that any of the bots of the fastest bots that were creating this ISK, are they are they part to blame for some of the um, you know poor health we're seeing in this economy so far? Well, I just did a two hour special on botting on uh, push to talk. Uh, I, I'll just gonna say when it comes to bots, 
There's no easy solution. Netties, good luck. <laughs> so it's, it's a whack-a-mole problem. You solve it in one place, it just pops up someplace else. Um, I think right now, now that they've kind of offered us tools to shut down like ISK sellers in local, in local and stuff like that, and they're going to constrict the ability for bot like mass bot farms to do planetary production farming. I think the problem will start to relieve itself. Um, we're never going to get out of a situation where where botting is not going to be profitable in a mobile game because the reality is the interface is too easy to exploit and cheese, and you can always add bots. You can always scale laterally with with more accounts, and so they just have to be hyper vigilant about it, and they have to increase the cost of doing business on on that front. But because we have this baked-in real money transaction opportunity with Plex and Plex Exchange, um, it's, it's just it's never going to go away. And, and this is where designs like um, making what some will say is complication in, in, in the game, the, the more complicated something is, the more it lends itself to human interaction. Of course, you can say everything can be botted, yeah, but if there's skin in the game, this is back to the whole thing that I would like to see all NPC stuff kind of die and all structures are only player owned structures. If the profitability always includes skin in the game, bots will not necessarily be that effective because you can kill and shoot them too. And they're not really that good at war. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Ha having those assets trapped in space rather than inside of a station like would definitely give the players a way of materially combating botting and you know these isk farms and things like that but i think it, it's one of these two-prong sort of problems you have you have to attack it both from the development side and making the game a little less amenable to botting and then at the same time you have to give the players tools and incentives and honestly probably profitability in terms of hunting and killing these botters and because it's it's very time-based right the fact that it in in a lot of games when it comes to botting right you can kill them but it doesn't really make any sense and it doesn't matter but in a game like echoes and eve online if a bot was something that you could actually catch and you can actually kill that would actually benefit the anti-botting thing um, a player would be able to um, effectively fight back i don't think a bot is necessarily going to be able to effectively fight back i mean that would be that <laughs> Never say never. Watch, we we end up having some like crazy bots who learn how to fight. That would be an interesting turn of events. But I, I think at that point we call those players. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it, if they're that good, it's fine. They're almost like an NPC. Yeah, yeah. it's content. <laughs> Player generated NPCs. Oh dear. So okay. Um, let's see. So what do we also think? Because we we can we can call our friends. I don't know. I haven't seen any bots that can that can call their their bot friends yet. <laughs> don't give the botters too many ideas, Caleb. <laughs> Already, I can tell people are out there programming and figuring out a way to do this. Of like a located here with a fleet command or something. Um, so ratting mission rewards. These are kind of our main ways of making ISK. What should it gravitate towards, in your opinion, um, in the near future? In, in, a, in a perfect economy, what would it gravitate towards in the long run? I personally think that continuing to have those activities be the main faucets of ISK is perfectly fine. I think I think a lot of players enjoy ratting and they find it to be like a relaxing and enjoyable like gameplay loop, which is great. Um, and if it's the way if that's the mechanism by which ISK is injected into the economy, great. That's awesome. I think where we get into these unhealthy territories and unhealthy levels in the economy is, well, if the ISK generation is outstripping any mechanisms to get rid of that ISK, or there's not enough velocity of ISK where people are just hoarding and accumulating billions and billions and billions of ISK in their wallets and not being really in any way incentivized to deploy that ISK or use that ISK or more importantly, pay somebody else to do something with that ISK. Um, that that's the big that's where the economy starts to get stagnant and that's where we start running into a lot of these like asset abundance issues like Eve online is, is grappling with right now. Um, I would personally think that we should increase the relative cost is the is cost of manufacture um, because right now it's a pretty small part of the total like bill of materials for like a big ship like a cyclone. Um, and then I think NetEase really needs to explore what they think is the appropriate amount of time investment 
that it takes to mine and generate the ore and the minerals that it takes to generate those things. Because if because it kind of kind of harken back to that GDP graph that I put together of you know what's what's the total gross domestic product of Evecos for the first sixty days, and you realize that 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 pie chart is dominated by ratting, mission running, and looting NPCs when you kill them, and very little of it is actually dominated by the mineral production needed to create ships to do all that, and that I think is a very unbalanced economy right now. So how fast then, how fast does it take you to build one cyclone? Uh, so I, I pump out a cyclone in about just three hours and forty minutes right now. Nice. Um, so the I, think I, have, I think no finish. Sorry. That was, but but that, that that's the opportunity cost of the manufacturing slot. I think if you look at what it takes to actually mine for a cyclone, it's a much bigger number. Okay, gotcha. And, th and this just brings on something that I think is is really really relevant, and I I, I suspect Timmer with that will actually understand why this is something that he, that Nettie should do very soon. When it comes to contracts and hiring other players, which I think should be a vital part of a game's economy, one of the things you would need to have in the actual client to make it a lot easier for the players is things like a contract system with the third party and you need something like business to business uh, billing, right? I need to be able to send a bill to another player and so does my corp to another corp or another player and so does my alliance. Without the ability to bill people, we have to build all these stupid levels of trust with third party uh, services, right? Of course you can say- Or, 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 you, can, or, or you can do what we do is we, we, we have to manually launder money through personal wallets account to account corporation to corporation like that's what i was saying at the start of the talk is like there's ways to create that level of market exchange it's just completely like the average player is locked out of that economy altogether because it's done by like corporations with billions of isk of assets and alliances with like a trillion isk of assets what and that means we that never evade taxes gonna... i don't know what you're talking about well, i can neither just... confirm nor deny that we've actually engaged in these practices it's just it's just a, a slippery slope down uh, all the problems that gaming suffers, right? This is why NetEase needs to uh, make this uh, a better system. Some of the things that does actually protect CCP um, and, and EVE Online from some of these bad practices is that they do have a lot of uh, uh, oversight and eyes on all of these transactions and they can actually analyze them pretty well with uh, a few tools and, and algorithms, right? And, and this requires, uh, it needs to be difficult or mm, disincentivized to try to obfuscate um, the, the locked uh, market activities, right? Um, this, this is why I would like to see something like um, billing, player-to-player uh, -player billing uh, in a game like Echoes and in EVE Online, because it also gives you so much, so many tools to, to create real interaction and real services between players, right? If, if I want to rent out access to space to timber to, to mine, this is the whole mining permit meme, right? If I do that with a bill, then he can just go like that and ignore my bill. And I can see, oh, he's ignored my bill. Now I'm going to put him on my kill list, right? All these things will become emergent gameplay if we have these tools. Because in E Online, these things developed outside of client and it was very dominated by a handful of people that actually handled all third party stuff. Um, one of them, of course, being Kriba. But if some of these tools were available in the client, things like a notary system, why not just put that in there? It's, it's relevant, right? Put it on the forums if you want. But you need to have these things that are part of the fundamentals of human to human interactions and economies. So and I think the most, the most important takeaway, it's got to be in the game client especially for a mobile game. People don't have the ability, don't have the technology, technological capabilities on their phones to be switching between three or four different applications to be managing like third party out of game interactions and market transactions. This, this stuff has to be in the actual game client. And that, that's a big challenge for a developer like NetEase and like even CCP with 20 years of experience still can't get this stuff right. They are still just like poop in the bed every day <laughs> over and over with these like new interfaces that trying to implement and it's just terrible every single time they, they can't get their act together and they have 20 years of experience doing this and, and like our if, contract system still sucks yeah it, it's awful and like 
Echoes has the same problem. Like the contract interface is pretty bad. <laughs> it, it, it's workable for a mobile interface, but it's still not great. And like if if we want to encourage like a healthy kind of services ecosystem within Echoes, we have to have those tools in the game without having to rely on a third party, a third party, be that a player or a third party tool or application to manage some of that stuff. 100%. But I mean, at this point, I'm not going to lie. If they were just to give me like a spreadsheet of the hangar logs, I would be so happy. I know that's going to be something that they put in to help make uh, industry a little bit more efficient to see who can take what out of your hangar. But dude, at this point, just give me an Excel spreadsheet. I'll, I'll, I'll format it. I don't need it to be pretty. <laughs> I just want to see the data. But uh, your your assets assets control API that would be uh, number one. Number two would be market API. Come on, Netties, that is essential. We need this. Please, please, yeah. Netties, <laughs> give us a yeah, market it's, API. It's, it's bad. I, I need it. I need it. Like I need crack, and like they can't implement <laughs> it fast enough. And it's such a trivial thing to implement too. Like literally, any, any like grad like an undergrad coder can implement this thing in an afternoon. And I hopefully without crashing the servers. So that, that's probably the risk. That, that's probably the calculus that they're trying to solve is like, well, are all these calls, all these function calls, and all these transactions going to like really like bring the servers to to a halt? But put it on a delay uh, on like six hours or something that it's not going to update until then, and then you have a, a complete mirror of the assets uh, database. It shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. But now, 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 now we're trying to like reverse engineer how they implemented the the, the guts of the uh, the server architecture, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so, Caleb, you asked me an interesting question a, a bit ago about like how do I think about labor hours and mining within Echoes, and I think data mining the set that they gave us in terms of how many how many M3 of ore has been mined, I kind of came up with a pretty interesting statistic. So when I think about manufacturing and manufacturing level of effort, I think about it in units of Venture 3 hours. So how one hour in a Venture 3 with average skills and a cheap fit produces about 30,000 M3 worth of ore. And so as a result, since launch, there have been two and a half million Venture 3 hours of mining that has occurred within Eve Echoes since launch. And that's a pretty fun fun statistic to think about. Um, for comparison's sake, um, today a cyclone at a pretty highly optimized approach takes about mm, 15 to 20 M Venture 3 hours to mine the ore. I don't know if that's like a... I don't know if that's a good number. I don't know if it's a bad number. That's just the number. It, it's so funny because I did exactly the same back in the day. I did the actual calculation of a, of a maxed out uh, Hulk, right? And then I calculated every other value in Hulk hours. Yeah, because that's what you need to do, right? To, to convert labor uh, and value, you have to have these uh, called indices that you use for it. And you're using a venture and I used to use a Hulk. It's just funny that you go with the exact same approach that I did. Well, obviously the number that I use for me is a little different because I have a whole fleet of retrievers that I mine with. But the Venture 3 unit, I think, is kind of a, a universally applicable unit because like, even a PvP character with like 200k of skill investment is sufficiently can, can hit that number. And then as a corporation, when you're talking about organizing your labor and organizing your forces to do a mining op, that's, that's how you can very quickly kind of narrow in as, you know, was this fleet fight where we lost 10 Cyclones how many how many man hours of mining ops do we have to do in order to cover that? And then you know then you get into these questions of okay, are there more isk efficient and resource efficient approaches that we can do? But then logistics in Evecos right now sucks. It's awful. It's it's nigh impossible to move any significant quantity of minerals or modules anything across the galaxy. Like trying to get some trying to get any significant quantity of minerals from high sec to null sec is impossible. You, you can't move tritanium. Like it's, it's functionally impossible. And like, we don't even have any of these tricks like we had in, in, the, in EVE Online where we could like manufacture like, yeah, like <laughs> yeah, for rail guns or like damage control units or something as, as a means of compressing tritanium. And like, we don't even have like freighters or jump freighters or anything. Like it's, it's really bad right now. The logistics game is very challenging for the, the, the Alliance and the corporation level logistics. I definitely think there needs to be a little bit more of that introduced because I do, I remember when before Echoes had launched uh, logistics and hauling, that was kind of like a whole, that's supposed to be something that people can legitimately just specialize in and that's their main focus. And it, 
I haven't really seen much of that. We have, you know, a lot of our guys hollow hollow their stuff themselves. So it would be nice to see those types of specialized roles a pop up and see corps that only haul. They only do logistics. They only haul. Um, man, that would be a juicy kill if they're hauling a lot of goodies. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's where you get courier contracts with collaterals, right? So, so that that actually works. But and you know, collateral funny. scams and all the joys <laughs> yeah, of that. Yeah, 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 all the joys of that. It's, it's just so funny because I think it was Elise Randolph that 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 has called Eve Echoes uh, Eve Online on fast forward, and it's so funny to hear Tima actually almost on point hitting the same things that we hit back then because I'm sure he remembers that we had the same problems with industrial ships being way too small to ship anything in a in, in a useful way yeah, it was like and, years before we got freighters yeah, yeah, and eve online yeah, like years so and long. years and then they did the the specialist uh industrial ships before that and they did the weird container stuff and and then we had the problems with containers container with juggling oh like, man oh my god it was just so <laughs> containerception <laughs> it was so funny but but it, it's again this is the, the things that NetEase needs to do they need to talk to uh ccp and and maybe also a lot of the, the the original eve players how did it work back then and what was broken so they can skip the dumb phases i'm all for skipping the dumb phases i, I don't know I, I, uh, like overall i think okay, I, some of them are fun some yeah of them are so, some fun. of yeah some of them are fun i'm like mm, i mean take some of them to the advantage but i definitely think regardless there's there's definitely still a few kinks that need to be worked out but overall i'm pleasantly happy with how echoes has turned out i mean it's the market is although there's some you know kinks it's st still far better than any other mobile game i've ever played um i don't actually think i've ever really played any other mobile game that isn't that actually has a legitimate market that you can trade things with other players in like this to this scale but this is where things like uh, differentiation of space comes in, right? And and balance of trade and imports, exports, and all of those interesting things in an economy that you have to kind of put in there a little bit by design from from the developer side. So some space is better for some things than others because I can't grow bananas in Denmark, and I'm pretty sure that um, potatoes in Central Africa is not that good. Um, so it's, it's 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 the whole thing about. So let's say I want to uh, produce a specific hull, right? That should be beneficial in a specific location compared to another. And and this is the type that then creates this whole balance of trade that, that I can create something that you want to either come and buy where I live. And, and it, it also, it's the counter to the lock-in of raw materials because there's nothing, you, you don't, moving around minerals is, is basically supposed to be a little bit useless, right? You, you're supposed to keep your pyrite and your titanium locally because it makes no sense to ship that stuff because the, the is per cubic meter is just horrendous, right? So so that should always stay local. The mid range, you should maybe move a little bit out of the way if there's a benefit to it, but it's really the high end that becomes the import export thing. And that means that you have to differentiate space and then you have to also the, the, the productivity, the, 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 the player uh, types that are in that location and get that whole uh, outsourcing thing working, right? Without that, there is no MMO. It's just a weird uh, touchpad solo player game. Yeah, and, that, that, and there's a little bit of that already in Eve Echoes because of the reliance on farming cores to get blueprints for anything higher than tier three um, forces players to farm their local space. I think NetEase has a missed opportunity and once they introduce sovereignty, I think they have an excellent opportunity to further kind of enforce that level of um, differentiation region to region. I know this, this is a this is a big soapbox that you like to get on, Caleb, talking about you know specialization and and regional differentiation or geographical differentiation within within the universe. And I think I think we're a little bit we're there kind of right now. We can get better, and I think the way to do that is continuing to like cores are already like very scarce within the Echo's economy, and then just amping that up with planetary interaction and further locking to, down planetary interaction resources as being the major bottleneck of production, I think is going to create that level of tension within the whole economy. That's going to encourage a lot of this sort of both fighting and trading. Interesting. Now, we are going to be having to wrap up pretty soon, but before we get going, would we like to do either a shout out or at least maybe let players know from an industry perspective um, 
what your advice would be on how to make more ISK as an industry player in the current state as it stands. I think my only advice would be um, to the extent that Eve Echoes actually works, everything that applies to real life applies to the game. So if you want to do something and you want to make money, service real human beings with something that they need. So make relationships, like really build relationships yeah. and find out what you can trade. Well, th th there's also like playing the supply and the demand side of the market too. So I think that that's what Caleb was really alluding to is, you know, you don't want to build ships that nobody wants to fly and nobody wants to buy. But, you know, the, there's a secondary meta strategy of maybe you do want to build those because there's nobody else is building them. And like, realizing that there's this like multidimensional game of markets and market forces that you can exploit for, for profit is there. Um, honestly, because of the tax regime in the open market, if anybody who's starting out in production and industry, it's pretty much a losing game to do anything other than to establish a relationship with a major producer that's already very efficient and, and down the rabbit hole of production efficiency. Um, you, you need to kind of start from somewhere to build your, your capital pool and starting at the top of the value chain at the top of the mountain is not where you're gonna be successful. You kind of gotta have to work your way up the chain. And unfortunately that means probably a lot of mining, probably a good, good amount of hauling um, and just training up a lot of characters with with a diversity of skills to be able to work around the the speed bumps that NetEase has put in front of you. And you just said that maybe potentially joining a corp. Are you guys recruiting in your corp at this time? Yeah, absolutely, Fish. Thank you. Um, yeah, Royal Elite is obviously constantly recruiting all kinds of pilots, T6 and above. We are an all-set corporation with all the joys and dangers that that brings. So if, if you're interested, I think you, you've got the, the Discord link for recruitment there in, in the chat. Yep, in the description. So if you guys are interested in joining Roll, check out the description and you can send them your application to see if you want to learn how to make some ISK and learn from Timmy because I think he's got lots of knowledge. really awesome for you guys to share. So thank you guys so much and uh, we will can see you. Can I finish you with one, one small plug? I really yeah. think everyone watching this should go and watch the interview with Andrew Groen about his second book about the wars in Eve and also buy it because potentially this is your cheat sheet, right? We just covered that it's Eve on fast forward. So mm -hmm. a lot of the things that's in those books is basically like cheat sheets. Yeah, the, the, this is the stuff that we should aspire to in Eve Echoes. Like oh. it's, it's a lot of really great stories of like personal conflict corporation conflict lots of pew pew lots lots of ships getting blown up lots of espionage it's it, it's really like uh you can't make this stuff up yeah history definitely does repeat itself i will say that when i was first integrating into the eve community prior to echo's launch i did listen to andrew groen's first audiobook and it was fantastic really great I, we just like i listened to it on my way to eve vegas and it it was interesting because as Eve Echoes has come out, I've seen a lot of parallels. You know, you've you've seen, I feel like we have our own modern day Jade Constantine. Um, you know, I won't name who I think that is, but we definitely have a few of our own characters who I can kind of see some paral parallels to. So it will be interesting to see how those continue to grow. And I'm sure that as, as we continue to go in our fast forwarded version, we will have more and more of, of those similarities between the two worlds. So very inter very interesting. But yeah, so we'll have to check out that second book. Thanks for mentioning that, Caleb. Any shout outs you guys wanna give? No? All right, well, shout outs to the players watching. Thank you so much, Capsuleers. Have a good one and fly safe.